Good day everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. So in this video, I want to talk about 1.2, scalar quantities and vector quantities. So with any new term, we ask ourselves, so how do we define it, right? So let's look at the first one, the definition of scalar quantity. So a scalar quantity is a physical quantity that can be described by a single number. So the, the, the important point here is that this single number represents the magnitude. It doesn't talk about anything else, just the magnitude. And it, this differs from the vector quantity because for a vector quantity, you have both magnitude and direction. So you have two items here instead of one. So how do you differentiate them? If I say a scalar quantity of A, right, I will write it like that. If I say a vector quantity of A, I will write it like that. See, you see the difference? The difference is, for the vector quantity, I have a small little arrow on top of the letter. And whenever you see this, it means that that quantity or that letter, the quantity that that letter represent is a vector. Okay, vector. If you see an arrow, it's a vector. Okay, so, um, well, if you have a vector, right, because we're talking about directions, can we break it down into its components? So what I mean by that, so let me just show you. Say you have a vector A, right? So here's a vector A, it's all in red, you can see it, all right? But the problem we have right now is that this vector is not on the x-axis, neither it is on the y-axis. So it looks something like that. So we ask ourselves, what is, how much of A is in the x direction and how much of A is in the y direction, right? So what we then do is we project A, right? We project, that means we take the same length over here, right? We take the same length and ask ourselves, hey, look, I have AX, which is the length of A in the x direction and AY, which is the length of A in the y direction. Now, what I do next is I take this, the vector, the, the arrow and the letter, and I bring it over here. And what I get is a triangle. So triangle, you have three points, you have three corners. Well, co co I call them corners, but you have three points, right? And here, when you see a triangle, two words should go into your head. Well, technically, it's only one word, but two words that I want you to know, which is number one, Pythagoras, okay? Pythagoras. Number two, the second word is trigonometry. Trigonometry. So what I mean by Pythagoras is um, C square equals to B square plus A square. And then trigonometry, what I mean by is sine, cos, and tangent, okay? So let me just show you how it applies, all right? So let's have a triangle, right? The one we had just now. And what I will do now is I will label the angle between A and AY to be theta, okay? Can I? All right, if I use trigonometry and I write down there sine theta without knowing anything else, I'll just write down sine theta. And I know sine theta is going to be the opposite of the angle over the hypotenuse. Right, so it's going to be ax over a, right? And if I rearrange that, what I will get is ax is equals to a sine theta. It is at this point I can calculate the length of ax. Okay, now oh that is nice. Then how do I relate a to a y then? I can have cos theta, right? And just to remind you, cos theta is going to be adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be AY over A. Then what I will have, rearranging it, is AY equals to A cos theta. Okay? So now I have two equations that tells me exactly what the length of AX and AY are. Okay? And that's how you can apply trigonometry into breaking one vector down into two components, right? In 2D. In 2D, you have two components. In 3D, then you will have three components. Then the maths gets a bit more complicated, but that's not 
that is not not necessarily your concern at this moment okay all right so next i want to talk about cartesian coordinates now cartesian coordinates is a coordinate system right that is mainly focused on planes when i mean what i mean by planes is a flat surface sort of you can imagine it as a, a flat surface and these flat surfaces are made out of perpendicular vectors right so if you think about like it like a graph paper right you have a grid system you have boxes after boxes after boxes and if you think as one of those box box boxes to be one unit then we have one unit in the x direction we call i hat i hat in the y direction we have j hat probably if in 3d then we have k hat which describes it in z coordinates right in z axis so these are what we call unit vectors unit vectors now when someone tells you to express a, a vector in cartesian coordinates right or yeah in cartesian coordinates and you want to use unit unit vector this is how you do it all right you have a right and then you have ax in the i direction plus a y in the j direction which is x and y so if we just recall what we had just now then i will have a a sine theta i plus a cos theta j all right so that's how you express it okay now next so because we have um, multiplication operations in, in, in scalars, so for example, you've learned since you were young that, okay, 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, right? But those only works, or those only, those work on scalar numbers, called scalar values, where you only have one number, right? But what about if you have both, you know, magnitude, right? And the direction, then what do you use? Well, in the in in a multiplication sense there are two types of multiplication in for vectors number one is the dot product and number two is the cross product so the dot product geometrically speaking if i have um if i have um, vector a and i say to dot with vector b then i will have the magnitude of vector a multiplied the with the multi with the magnitude of vector b and then it's going to be the cosine of the angle between them if you've noticed because i have values here magnitude just magnitudes and no direction at all then what we have is a scalar quantity so the result of the dot products of two vectors will result in a scalar quantity okay so um, now we ask the question well where do we get this equation from exactly so here's a diagram right I have X sorry I have a vector here and I have B vector here when I say I want to find I want to find a dot B what I am talking about is I will project a in the B direction then I will have a B right and then I, I will multiply a B with B so how do I get this a B right this a B is going to be again your triangle right and then your angle between a and B all right and um, what you what you can have because it is adjacent is you will have a B is equals to a cos theta okay so then i will have a b multiplied with b then i will have so magnitudes we are talking about magnitudes at this point let's not forget our symbols magnitudes 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 um so now i can have a magnitude cos theta multiplied with b which is how i got 
this equation okay so generally it's a measure it's a measure so dot product is a measure of um, parallelness I would say that parallelness because if they are in parallel with each other right you will have the maximum value if parallel then or if the angle sorry yeah if the or angle equals to zero angle between a and b is zero it's going to be maximum value maximum value whereas if this angle is 90 degrees then you will have literally zero you, you the dot product of two perpendicular vectors will give you zero okay so let's look at cross products if we have dot product to measure how parallel they are or what's the angle between them well the cross product is going to be the opposite of that it is going to be a measure of parallel uh, sorry perpendicularness so it is a measure of perpendicularness okay so geometrically speaking when I say I have a cross B or well algebraically speaking I will have a multiply it with B and then sine theta and then I have a direction so as you can see this is a unit vector so this is a vector product it's a vector quantity so the cross product of two vectors will result in a vector quantity okay so this direction n right it is written as n because it is going to be normal to a and normal to b so how do we express that in diagram so if i have a going that direction so a and I have B going in that direction then I'm going to change colors here then I am going to have N in this direction for example this direction okay now the angle between them is going to be okay it's going to be 90 degrees with B and then it's going to be 90 degrees with A as well it has to be so it's a measure of perpendicularness how perpendicular A and B is going to be because sorry because if if right if the angles is 90 right if the angle is 90 then you will have maximum value because sine 90 is 1 right but if you have if you have sine 0 right sine 0 is going to be 0 right so maximum value I'm going to write it here maximum value when theta is equals to 90 0 when theta is equals to 0 okay so that is the end of the video thank you for watching i will see you in the next video thank you very much